For as long as we've told stories about aliens, we've told stories about alien invasions. Tales of visitors from the beyond coming to lay waste to our planet. After all, one only has to look out into the darkness of the night sky to worry about what might lurk among the stars. But imagine the opposite scenario. Imagine if humanity's first interaction with alien life isn't them invading our planet, but us invading theirs. What if, in a twist of cosmic fate, the most dangerous life form in the universe is us? Humanity Lost, a world-building project and graphic novel series by artist Callum Diggle, imagines a future where humans have merged with a godlike artificial intelligence and are now the most dangerous life forms in a galaxy full of aliens. It's an exciting twist on the genre, and a story that features some particularly inventive speculative life forms. So, for this entry into the archive, I'll break down the universe and timeline of Humanity Lost, explaining how humans reach this point, the aliens who stand against their expansion, and what might come after. At the start of the 26th century, humanity has yet to give itself over to the AI. Under the oversight of the United Earth government, humans populate every major celestial body in our solar system. On Earth's moon, giant lava tubes are terraformed and become home to great cities larger than any on Earth. Yet as humans seek out more and more distant planets, they soon encounter another sentient species, one which will set them on a path towards a dark future. In the mid-26th century, a distant human probe discovers planet Chiron, a dry world that has become hotter over the past several million years. On the surface, they find that in response to the growing desert, megaflora called Mammidae have arisen, acting as natural reservoirs holding on to the last of the planet's water. Within these vast plant structures, human explorers find a complex internal ecosystem that constantly recycles water, and in return provides nourishment to the Mammodae. Outside the lush interior of the Mammodae, the United Earth Government discovers in the desert more life in the form of the Living Wave, a horde of scavengers chasing across a region called the Shifting Sea, eating everything they encounter. These inventive aliens are actually inspired by strand beasts, real structures made by artist Theo Jansen that are propelled by the wind in a way which resembles walking animals, despite actually being made out of wood. And just looking at videos of the strand beasts, you can see why they make such good alien designs. But the living wave isn't the only thing the UE discovers. Even more significant is the revelation that a species of intelligent aliens also live here. The six-limbed Chantari are the first intelligent life humans make contact with. The Chantari are unhappy with the presence of the United Earth government, which begins to establish colonies and mine the planet for resources, which the less technologically advanced Chantari are helpless to prevent. To the Chantari, humans are the alien invaders. Humanity's treatment of the Chantari awakens a previously unknown alliance of alien systems known as the Conglomerate. Swiftly decimating the human presence on Chiron, in a stroke of dark cosmic justice, the conglomerate proves to be far more powerful than the United Earth government. Realizing they are hopelessly outmatched, the UE activates a dangerous, newly constructed AI in their desperation to win the war. And win the war it does. But humanity as we know it is lost, transformed into genetically altered avatars of the machine's will. Encased in biomechanical suits of armor, troopers like these are dropped on planets as the first wave of the invasion. Looking more like insects than humans today, these drones are little more than puppets of the great AI. And after the troopers come the great krakens, enormous living spacecrafts that descend on an alien planet and bombard it from above. But the ever-expanding force of what was once humanity isn't just destroying worlds, it's reshaping them to its will. Late into the 26th century, the Empire spreads across the galaxy like a relentless tide, transforming other planets into biomechanical factories known as womb worlds. These worlds spew out more augmented troops and ships to continue the cyclical nature of the AI's malignant expansion. With this empire, now called the Imperium, moving across the galaxy, only the remaining aliens of the conglomerate stand in the way. So, what life forms make up the conglomerate? 
The founders of the Alliance are the Seuss. This spacefaring species originally hails from planet Solus, a low-gravity world with a dense atmosphere. Perfectly suited to moving around in such a strange environment, the Seuss rule the skies of their homeworld thanks to a biological jet propulsion system, a bit like an aerial version of an Earth Nautilus. Like all members of the conglomerate, the Seuss are an advanced species. The second species to join the Alliance are the Pect. Originating from an icy moon orbiting a gas giant, they have evolved in geothermally heated oceans trapped below the moon's icy outer shell. Within these dark waters, the Peck adapted bioluminescence that they used to communicate with each other much like many deep-sea species on Earth. Thanks to specialized crafts that let them venture beyond the ice, this unlikely group has become a vital member of the conglomerate alliance. In terms of engineering, the primary manufacturers of conglomerate warships are the Bremhenians. Evolving on a crushing, high-gravity world called Wimrig, Bremhenians are as rigid and sturdy as their technology. Originally living in vast subterranean cities, Bremhenians are almost like a group of intelligent moles. And while the high gravity of their planet meant the Bremhenians were never able to reach space on their own, with the help of the conglomerate, they're now a major ally against the Imperium. On the opposite end of the biological spectrum, the Velocians are a gelatinous, soft-tentacled species that paradoxically are some of the greatest warriors in the Alliance. With a culture of honor and tradition, the Velocians historically resolved almost any dispute through combat, in particular by way of the blade. With three brains, two of which are dedicated entirely to a single arm tentacle, Velocian motor skills are unparalleled. This kind of decentralized intelligence is similar to that of an octopus, a key line of the conglomerate defense. But the conglomerate haven't been able to keep every system safe. The thick-coated Ver-A are a group of interstellar refugees whose homeworld was destroyed and now live under the protection of the conglomerate. Originally adapted for the frigid swamps of their home planet, the Ver-A's pole-like toes allow them to keep themselves above the water level of the swamp and to hang from swamp trees much like sloths do on Earth. Now these swamps are factories for Imperium forces and their numbers are few. As the Imperium continues to spread, the conglomerate has had to make alliances with ancient enemies. The Gord are a bizarre species that have long been seen as impossible to ally with. Curiously, the Gord are technically not one species, but two. The central plant-like core of a Gord works as a hive for smaller, insect-like drones, providing guidance through complicated pings of information that the drones are perfectly adapted to understand, serve, and reply. The flying drones, in turn, act as the eyes and hands of the central plant structure, pinging visual information back to the structure and allowing the gourd to manipulate objects around them. A quite unusual setup, almost like a sentient beehive. Yet through this symbiosis, the gourd have developed their extremely advanced civilization, and now often wear environmental suits such as this one adapted for their unique anatomy. Indeed, the gourd are so unique that their language and culture is practically indecipherable to any other species of the galaxy, which unfortunately led to several wars between them and the conglomerate in the past. But with all the galaxy in jeopardy, the gourd joined the Alliance and become a powerful ally in the fight against the Imperium. But not all sentient species have joined the conglomerate. The Tandrax are the single most technologically advanced species in the galaxy, so advanced they have little interest in the Imperium conglomerate conflict. They live solely within Dyson swarms, giant constellations of satellites that orbit a sun, absorbing all its energy. The Tandrax strange bodies are perfectly suited to the zero-g environment of space, with air jets all over their body and large webbed tentacles they use as air brakes. Yet as advanced as they are, with the Imperium continuing to expand, they might at last need to change their isolationist ways. Yet in this galaxy of aliens and post-humans, forgotten aboard a derelict ship, there is one final life form worth mentioning. A single human, accidentally trapped in stasis for hundreds of years, has recently awakened to find themselves the last of their kind. Crash landing on planet Chiron, the world where this whole mess began, the last human finds an unlikely ally in a lone Chantari, the first alien species humanity encountered long ago. Now on the run from the watchful AI, it's possible this lone human holds the key to saving the dream of humanity. 
That's all I can give away in this video. The story of humanity lost is ongoing, but if you find the world building as interesting as I do, you can support Callum Diggle on Patreon to gain access to the graphic novel for just $1.50. I've included a link to it in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.